Do you have tummy aches and occasional diarrhea? Well, it's either because of cucumber seed tapeworm infection or something completely different. If it is the former, however, we can safely bet that besides you being incredibly unlucky, fleas are on your diet. <laughs> While most people don't eat fleas, your pets do it more often than you'd think. Alright, so what's the deal with this tapeworm and the fleas? Dipalidium caninum, aka the double pore tapeworm, or the flea tapeworm, or the cucumber seed tape. Seriously, is this a naming contest? It's a widespread intestinal parasite of dogs, cats, and even people. In order to complete its life cycle, however, it needs the flea as an intermediate host. Without the flea, the worm is royally screwed. It starts its life as an itty-bitty egg, leaving the infected host in the most glorious manner. Sherlock, are you shitting on the doormat again? More often than not, the eggs have a huge mobile packaging, as we'll see later, Hi. and are able to find a way out on their own. I've brought some friends. Ending up in the environment of the host, they will come across this creature from a sci-fi B-movie. <laughs> it is actually a flea larva, which spends its days pondering about important questions and eating whatever organic debris it can find, be it the fallen feces of adult fleas, dead skin, dried snot, microscopic alien life forms, We come in peace, earthling. <laughs> or any tissue or poop particle the dipalidium egg is stuck to. The consumed egg hatches, becoming a hook-wielding but still cuddly oncosphere and invades the larval body. Over time the flea larva will molt twice, turn into a pupa and eventually into an adult flea. The worm will stay with it all along like a fond memory of visiting the proctologist. Breaking out of the pupa, the flea hops onto a dog or a cat walking by and starts feeding. Feeling warm and cozy, the oncosphere, still occupying the flea, turns into its form infectious to the definitive host, the so-called cysticercoid, which is a... think of it as a shrunken head in a plastic bag. Clearly, Mother Nature was on a serious acid trip when she came up with the idea. Behold, my greatest creation! But there it is anyway, a cysticercoid, waiting and hoping. Hoping that the flea will one day let itself be caught by the host in a dazzling display of stupidity. I bet I can run out in the open, tie my shoelaces together, bite the dog, moon it, untie my shoelaces and make it back alive. If during grooming the host accidentally eats the flea, the cysticercoid will break free and start its adult life in the small intestines. As any decent shrunken head in a plastic bag, it attaches itself to the bowel wall by hooks on its face and begins growing a body out of its neck. The body consists of a chain of self-sustaining segments, each containing both male and female reproductive organs with a heap of eggs. Nurseries lined up in a neat row. Having no digestive tract of its own, the worm absorbs nutrients through its surface from the gut contents of the host. Mmm, yummy! As the parasite gets longer and longer, reaching up to 70 centimeters, it becomes increasingly difficult for it to pass through revolving doors. F*** me! Therefore, it will start letting go of the oldest, most mature segments. These loose packages of eggs contain autonomous muscle fibers and are able to move on their own. Outside the host, they cannot sustain themselves for long, so don't expect them to break the world record in 400 meters hurdling, but they can crawl out of the host's butt or crawl away from the poop they've been released with. Eventually, they'll dry out, break apart and get consumed by any nearby flea larvae. And the rest, as they say, is history. The symptoms of dipalidiosis are usually very mild, if any. Depending on the number of adult worms present, abdominal pain and diarrhea or constipation may occur. 
Moving segments cause anal itching, which leads to dogs scooting their buttons across the floor. Young animals with a high worm burden have bloated bellies, but are otherwise thin and, in extreme cases, may produce convulsions and seizures. With that said, the only sign most of the time is the appearance of free segments in the feces or around the anus, looking much like, you guessed it, a Higgs boson. Nah, just kidding. They look like rice or cucumber seeds, hence the name cucumber seed tapeworm. Adult people are rarely struck by the disease because the only way of contracting it is by eating infected fleas, which does not happen to be a widespread habit in our society. Children, however, who use their mouths as a third hand are at a greater risk. A definite diagnosis of dipolidiosis is reached with the help of the parasitologist's best friend, Poop. Want to help me with my work? Sure. Can we go to the movies afterwards? Yeah, why not? Nice. Give me a hug. Uh, um... The best clue is the obviously visible segments, but if none are present in the sample, microscopic examination may still reveal free eggs. With some luck. Treating dipolidiosis is easy. There are plenty of deworming products able to kill the intestinal worms with great reliability, and disposing of your pet's poop instead of decorating the garden with it will decrease the parasitic load on the environment. The tricky part is dealing with recurrence. For this, we have to focus our attention on the fleas and uh, wipe them out. You missed. The first step of eradicating flea infestation is to put on your war face and prepare for a long fight. Listening to the beloved classic Nails on the Chalkboard can help you get used to the unavoidable frustration. Various products exist which kill off or repel adult fleas on your pet. Ideally, you want a fast-acting one which doesn't allow newly arriving fleas to finish composing entire symphonies on the host, because infectious cysticercoids can develop quickly. Furthermore, in the rare case of a flea-jumping host, or if ambient temperatures are high, your pet may receive an already infectious bloodsucker right at the start, so time is of the essence. But adult fleas are just a tip of the iceberg. Eggs, larvae and pupae make up the bulk of the flea population, and they are not found on the animal, but in its environment. Your pet's blanket, your pet's bed, your blanket, your bed, the carpet, the doormat, the cracks on the floor and the quantum gaps in space-time. The most important source of infestation and re-infestation is juvenile flea presence in the environment. Solution? Either sell your house to a loser or napalm it. In case these are not viable options, you will need to vacuum, clean, wash and disinfect a lot, and even so, you will not get rid of all of the pests. However, if you keep on protecting your pet against reinfection with appropriate products, the environmental flea generation will eventually die out due to the lack of suitable hosts. It might take some time though, like solving a thousand piece puzzle of the blue sky with your eyes replaced by billiard balls, but in six months or a year, you'll probably get there. With all this fuss involved, it's easier to just prevent flea infestation as it is, than wait for it to happen and then treat it. Veterinary flea killers and repellents will do the trick for you. This way, instead of trying to kill flea pupae under the floor tiles with battery acid and a flamethrower, you can spend more time on watching pork. <laughs> Plus, you don't have to worry about dipolidiosis anymore. There's your feel-good moment of the day. To sum up, the cucumber seed tapeworm is an intestinal parasite of dogs, cats, and even humans. Fleas are their intermediate hosts, so wherever you find a worm, you will find fleas nearby. Treating the infection happens with dewormers, but prevention requires flea control. Also, please don't eat fleas, it's silly. Health. It makes you live longer. <sighs> what a lame-ass boring mission. <sniffs> Dr. Eva Falk was kind enough to fact-check this video. I thank her very much. As much as I thank Siva for its support.